<laughs> well, good morning, folks. Uh, my name is Terry Shannon, and I have the good fortune. I'm president and CEO of St. Mary's Food Bank Alliance here in Arizona. And uh, today is a, a, an incredible next step in a partnership that we started discussions probably three years ago um, with the folks at WIC about blending together our services um, here to be able to make it more convenient for the, for the client, for those folks who are coming in to either seek services from the food bank or seek services from WIC, and are there programs that can be crossed back and forth um, to be able to help those who are struggling right now. And obviously in today's environment, more and more folks are in a difficult situation. We're just seeing incredible increases in demand for all of our food distribution programs. So it, it, it's really terrific. I've been hearing all the ads on the newspaper about the change in the, in the offering that's going to be available for the WIC um, clients that are coming in the door. That's a tremendous step forward. Um, we're excited about the partnership here and having WIC as a partner and, and other government agencies because the ability to solve the hunger issue is not going it, to, it's not one faceted. It's multidimensional and it is a public and private environment to be able to help, help us overcome that. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce um, Will from the, uh, uh, the state side of things to be able to come up and uh, talk a little bit more about WIC. All right. Thanks a lot, Terry. You're welcome. <coughs> so uh, thanks a lot. My name is Will Humble, uh, W-I-L-L-H-U-M-B-L-E. Right now I'm the interim director for the Arizona Department of Health Services. And I mean, this has really been a long time coming. The, the, the WIC program really started in the 70s at a time when, you know, hunger was a, an acute public health issue. And by the way, it still is. But over the last 30 years, we've added on another public health issue that really has um, a, a, a huge impact on folks, and that's obesity. And so we really started working about three years ago to transform the WIC program into a program which had a decent menu, um, but had a lot of food items that were high in calories and so forth that um, were contributing to the obesity problem in Arizona and across the country. And we looked at a way that we could transform that WIC program into something that would become more of a nutrition program and less of a calorie program. And so we'd spent a lot of time and a lot of research with a lot of science, food scientists and nutritionists and dietitians, and said, okay, let's get together and come up with a WIC menu that makes a lot more sense for today's world. And so uh, today, actually, we're rolling out that new menu, and you'll see that it includes a different array of foods for our WIC participants. And one of the most important changes, I think, is, and you can look at it here, this giant increase in the kinds of foods, uh, fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables that'll be available for our WIC participants. And that's really the biggest new change within uh, the whole new shift in the, in the WIC menu. And it's really gonna be an important thing for families because um, now WIC participants will be shopping in the produce aisle with their WIC coupons. And that's a huge change. And it's gonna be a big deal over the next several years as parents, especially moms, um, experiment with new fruits and vegetables with their family so that they can identify those things that their families love. Fresh spinach, fresh uh, cauliflower, carrots, garbanzo beans, you name it. Fresh fruits and vegetables will be on the plate now that hadn't been there before. And so we've got this, this brand new array of foods that are out there, and it's really one of the biggest things in public health nutrition in the last 30 years. So we're really excited about it. And you know, there's lots of resources that we have at our www.azwic.gov website, recipes for families in English and Spanish, um, all sorts of uh, ideas to use this new WIC, WIC menu on the table um, so that you can ident so that you can introduce new foods to your kids and and really the behavioral change in terms of eating healthier starts with our, our, our littlest kids and that's what's so exciting about the WIC program and it's really dominated by um, you know participants in that young child category kids uh, zero to five and and that's where you can really start to establish um, better eating habits so with that I'd like to introduce Karen Sell who's our um, our program director, our bureau chief for, for nutrition services. Karen, you want to come up and talk a little bit? All right. We would like to invite um, all um, families to explore 
the new WIC food package with us. Um, we are very excited about our nutrition message and the fact that we're going to be offering new key nutrients that will make a difference. Whole grains, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, um, low-fat milk will be available in our food package and we want you to join with us in embracing this change and as Will said, if you would like to join our family, you can go to ArizonaWIC.gov and it will tell you where the closest WIC clinic is and please make an appointment and become part of the change. I'm um, done. The, um, you were talking about the low fat milks and that mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, are those required now? Uh, do the parents have to buy that milk? If a, if a child um, is over two years of age and um, for our women who are enrolled on our program, the preferred product is now low-fat milk, and that will be what we provide in our food package. And the reason is, is because low-fat milk has all of the key nutrients that a family needs. It just doesn't have as much fat as whole milk, and that's important when we're working towards a healthy diet. When um, I hear about some of these new foods that are being added, I'm a little astonished, I guess, that like, for instance, spinach, um, and albeit this is looking backwards as opposed to what you're introducing now, but why were some of those foods like spinach not on the menu before? When the WIC food package was designed in the early 70s, the health needs and the population-based needs of low-income people were a little different than they are now. And so the package was designed to meet those key nutritional needs that were calories and vitamin A and vitamin C and others. As we, as a population, have changed our health habits, we drive our cars more, we have other barriers to physical activity dependent upon where we live, there's less of a need for total calories and more of a need for a concentration of key nutrients and less foods and the right types of foods. And, and so that's what we've been able to do in redesigning the WIC food package and looking at the science. The food package has been redesigned so that people can choose the right foods in the right amount that will then provide them with those nutrients. Well, quick question for you. Mm -hmm. Step up. Oh, yeah. uh, can I get, yeah. Would you spell your name for us, please? It's S E L L. Karen Sullivan. Karen. She's the okay. she's the bureau chief for the Bureau of Nutrition and Physical Activity, okay. where our WIC program is one of twelve other programs. Is it K A R E N? Yes, it's K A R E N. Excellent. Uh, yeah. How is a program like this? Um, which is specific to part of the population, in your mind, fit into the overall um, role of your agency, which right. looks at the entire state's population? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. And one of the key factors here is that the changes here aren't just with our WIC recipients, the folks that are getting the, the WIC coupons. The changes are also being applied to our retailers. So the folks that um, are qualified uh, through the retail program to accept WIC coupons had to change their behavior as well. And that means that stores that previously didn't have any fresh fruits and vegetables or, or legumes and those sorts of things um, now are required to carry some of those things. And so, especially in rural Arizona and in the smaller stores, you'll start to see fresh fruits and vegetables at those kinds of locations because we're requiring those retailers to carry those kinds of foods. So the, the changes that we're implementing here are partly nutritional for our recipients, but it's also partly transformational for the system in the sense that we're gonna be adding uh, fruits and vegetables to retail locations that previously had not had those kinds of foods. So if you're not a WIC recipient, you'll start to see a change in what's available at your retail stores, uh, especially the smaller retail stores and the stores in rural Arizona, because the WIC program is requiring those facilities to start carrying more fruits and vegetables as a condition of staying on uh, as a WIC retailer. Any concern that people might drop from the program, you know, because they don't want to add those new things, or is it 
Is no. there enough incentive that you think they'll want to stay on? Well, I, we haven't seen anybody drop off because w w what we've really tried to do is make it easier for the retailers to make the transition. And so part of it is, at, is the requirements to add the new fruits and vegetables to make them available. Part of it is also, by the way, administrative. In other words, we have to do some transitioning with the cashiers especially to make sure that they understand what the new food group is so that when people get to the checkout counter they're able to move smoothly through the line and, and folks get those foods um, efficiently and they don't hold up the line. So part of this is training and the fact is you know we've been making this uh, transition over the, a period of really the last three years so we've had a lot of time and Karen you can go into some more detail about um, the logistics of what the kinds of the, some, some of the things we've done, and, and, and Karen could also go into some more details about what retailers are saying about the new WIC program. In regards to the retailers, Did you say, yeah. yeah. In regards to the retailers, there are more than 650 authorized WIC vendors in Arizona, and they have been an essential partner in this change. There's an incentive for the retailers as well. They would like to be able to carry more inventory. And having a ability to sell that inventory to a WIC client is a win-win for both of us because if they have corn tortillas and they have brown rice and they have fruits and vegetables and they know that their WIC clients are going to be purchasing that in their stores and that it enables them to expand their line of foods, we have had no problems whatsoever with, with the small grocers and their view of how they can implement this. And in fact, we always have more of a demand to be an authorized WIC vendor than, than we can authorize because of, um, of some of the administrative restrictions. We have a, we have a aggressive training program. We've been working with vendors since July. We will be, um, in fact, today is our first day to redeem all of these items in the store um, in great quantity. And we feel that long term, this will be a real win-win situation because we anticipate buying through the three WIC programs in Arizona more than a million dollars of fresh fruits and vegetables a month. And will those come from Arizona? Um, they hopefully will um, be locally grown because we're, we're unique. One of the unique strategies that we're employing in the implementation of our food package is we are authorizing farmers to be WIC um, vendors for the fruit and vegetable coupon. We recruited more than 160 Arizona growers that are part of the farmers market network through Arizona. And when we issue a CVV, as it's called, a cash value coupon today in the amount of $6 for a child, they have the choice of whether they're going to go to the farmer's market and redeem it or whether they want to go to the grocery store. And our farmer's market program is locally grown um, produce within the boundaries of Arizona. Um, my kids don't like tofu or eggplant or uh, necessarily spinach, so what, what do parents do? Parents have the opportunity to buy what children would like to eat as well as to buy new foods that they can experiment with. And, they, and you know, sometimes you have to introduce that food two or three times before a child will be comfortable with consuming it. But the versatility of the Arizona WIC program and the WIC program itself nationally is, is that there's a lot of choice, as you can see here. It's any fruit or vegetable except white potatoes. And a lot of people have wondered why. Well, the white potato in our diet is very predominant and people get enough of it. But we're hoping through education, oh, food demonstrations, as well as other opportunities, parents will begin to experiment with new fruits and vegetables and children will eat more fresh fruits and vegetables because research has shown that the more fruits and vegetables that children eat, that statistically less chance that that child will be overweight. And so we want to change the, um, the choices. Talk about the recipes for a second that we're doing. Well, the recipes have all been developed by the Arizona Nutrition Network, which is our food stamp education program. And they're on the table here. And we try to, um, to make them easy to prepare. 
require a very minimum number of ingredients. We do taste testing um, with our community to see that the recipe and the product that it produces is fabulous. And, um, and what we're trying to do is enable families to be able to experiment with these new foods. Adrian, who's here with us, did a project with the Arizona um, Dairy Council and um, we're and it's very it's just really terrific and we had our participants submit recipes and we now have a recipe book with all these new foods that won the contest for tasting good and and um, we're going to offer that resource to our clients to enable them to use the new foods but i would have to think at some point that we've been eating the same stuff for the last 30 years or so four years my kids won't eat anything else, or my family, my wife doesn't want to make that, or you know, mm -hmm. uh, how do how do you how do you get break that chain? I mean, for the people starting out now, it'll be easy because they don't know any different. Right. But for the people who have been doing it, let's say they've had ten kids and they've been on the WIC program for thirty years, how do you break that chain there? You break that chain by engaging your client and working with them on the changes that they are willing to make and making small steps towards bigger change. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using, as I said, food demonstrations. So you get people into a WIC clinic and they try new foods. For instance, one of the things that we've worked on um, and has been very, very successful is we do milk testing or tasting. And I can guarantee you that I can put a series of cups out and put milk in it and people will not be able to distinguish between low fat and whole milk in most cases because we read, you know, we, we eat with our eyes in a sense. But you can change people's taste preferences. You can educate individuals on why they need to make good choices so they'll be healthier longer and not become a victim of the, of the impact of being overweight, which there is a correlation to hypertension. There's a correlation to the onset of diabetes, arthritis. I mean, there, I can name and name and name, and people through education and opportunity to test, taste, and experience those products will hopefully embrace the change and make the change. Hey, I, I want to do something a little bit more on obesity too, because we, I mean, we touched upon the the public health issues that are that we face with this obesity epidemic, but we haven't really gone into a lot of detail about it. And, you know, one of the things, you know, I got, uh, as an interim director of the department, I go a lot of different places, and people ask me all the time, well, what, what's the biggest public health issue, you know, that we face here in Arizona? You know, people always ask me that question. They expect to hear something like West Nile or influenza or those kinds of things that are in the news all the time. And I always say, you know what, the biggest public health threat that we face is obesity. And it's from physical act, the lack of physical activity and poor nutritional habits, not just in Arizona, but really across the country. And it's really astonishing when you look at what's happened to the American culture in terms of um, healthy eating habits and physical activity over the last 30 years. It's really, it's really um, frightening in a sense because if you go back 30 years, there were really very few people that were obese. And there was a few people that were overweight, but obesity wasn't a huge public health issue back in, in, in 30 years ago. And over the last 30 years, because of the changes in the lifestyle of the American people and the, the changes in the diet of the American people, we've seen this explosion in obesity. And it's not just inconvenient and it's not just uncomfortable. It's a threat to their health. It puts them at higher risk for diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, uh, neuromuscular problems, skeletal problems. I mean, there's a whole host of things that obesity causes and it permeates our whole society. And guess what? It's impacting what it costs for healthcare in this country too, because through the Medicaid programs and Medicare programs and through the private health plans, over and over and over you get, again, you see this trend towards more and more resources being poured into um, health issues that are tied directly back to physical activity and nutrition and it's the fact that folks are getting more and more obese in this country. It's putting us all at, 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 at risk of a whole host of uh, health issues. And it's costing a lot of money. And I always say to the other thing I say is, well, what's the solution? You know what? With most public health issues, 
the solution is usually the lowest tech solution. And the low tech solution here is getting outside to do physical activity and making healthier choices when you decide what you're going to have at the dinner table. It's as simple as that. And you know, that's easy to say, but to get that behavioral change in place is really challenging. Um, but that's one of the exciting things I think about this new WIC menu is it gives us an opportunity to really hardwire healthier eating habits into the American public and here in Arizona because we've got the ability through the WIC coupons to drive people towards healthier foods. So instead of just talking about um, the nutrition with folks and encouraging people to make healthier habits, through this change in the WIC program, we're actually able to physically guide people towards healthier choices. So that's one of the most exciting things about this. And, and we've talked um, with my staff also about what's the next step? Well, one of the next steps is to consider this same kind of change in the food stamp program across the country. That would take a national initiative, and that's something that would have to happen at the federal level to make that change. But you, it, you can't ignore this obesity problem, and we have absolutely got to do something in terms of a public health intervention about it. This WIC change is a huge improvement, but we've also got to start looking at the food stamp program to see uh, if we can start guiding people's choices towards healthier foods in that program as well. Any other? Okay.